Right. Right. So it looks as if we're now recording. Right. Well, oh, good morning to you all. Welcome to this. Uh, my coming through for wave. Yeah. Fine. Welcome to this uh, digital meeting of the Kefili Local Access Forum. It's being held via Microsoft Teams on Friday, the 3rd of September at 10 a.m. This meeting will be recorded and made available to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images or audio of those individuals present and or speaking will be publicly available to all via the recording on the council's website at www.kefili.gov.uk. If members lose connection during the meeting, please make every effort to attempt to reconnect. However, the meeting will continue as long as it remains quo rate. Committee services staff are on hand and will be able to assist you to reconnect if necessary. Can I remind members to mute their microphones, but to leave the cameras on? Can I please ask that officers have their microphones and cameras turned off until they are invited to present their reports or speak on an item? Members and officers should only activate their microphone after the chair has invited them to speak on an item. Today, we'll be using hands up for voting on agenda items. So the chair to take a roll call of members and officers confirm attendees. So I understand uh, Rebecca is making a note of who's present. Yes, Chair, I can do that for you if you're happy for me to take a roll call now. Please do. OK, so we start with Councillor Nigel George. Present. Michael Benjamin Chair. Yeah, present. Uh, Barry Clark, I think we've had apologies from. G Davis. I think that's apologies. K Donovan. That's apologies. A Edwards. Present. Thank you. We've had apologies from Ali Evans. E Gwyn. I believe that's apologies. D Hale. Yeah, I knew it. Thank you. L Howells. I believe that's apologies, Chair. Okay. Okay. D, D Llewellyn. Yes, Chair. Yep. Thank you. J Morgan. Present. Thank you. Uh, we've had possible apologies from Alison Palmer. She may be joining us later. M. Poynton. Present. Thank you. R. Stones. Present. M. Thomas. Thank you. M. Thomas. Present. Thank you. Apologies from Councillor Walter Williams. Alex Wilson. Present. Thank you. And Nigel Yates. Present. Thank you. Uh, Chair, I think Barry Clark is joining us. We're just admitting him and uh, one other person now. Thank you. And officers, Chair, we have um, Phil Griffiths. Yeah, present. We have uh, Stephen Denbury. Yeah, present. And it's my, myself from committee services, and we have committee services officers in the background observing. Uh, from NRW, we have Germany drink water. Present. Thank you. And Sarah Tyndall is uh, arriving late from NRW chair. OK, thank you very much. And I believe mm -hmm. Barry Clark and um, Councillor Walter Williams have also joined us chair. OK, thank you very much. So, moving on to item number 
Number two, declarations of interest. Uh, councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility <laughs> to declare any personal and or prejudicial, prejudicial interests in respect of any items of business on this agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000 in the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Please use hands up function to indicate if you have any such declarations. So that's none there. Right, moving on. Uh, approval of the minutes of our last uh, meeting held on the 4th of June. Uh, if I can turn to those uh, minutes, which uh, you've probably all had copies of. Uh, on page one, are there any items? Uh, on page two, any matters there? No. And on page three, then turn to page four. And finally, on page five. So, they're all, everybody's happy with what uh, they've read there. Um, and now need someone to move that they're the accepted as a true record. Do I have, do I have somebody to uh, propose? Can I, can um, I move chair? Sorry again. Can I move? We accept. I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're proposing that they are accepted, yeah? Yes. OK, thank you very much indeed. And I need someone to second that. Yeah, I can do that, Chair. OK, thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, have those names been noted, uh, Rebecca? Yeah. Chair, if we could just ask everyone just to do a hands up, please, on the teams, um, just to approve the minutes, please. Thank you. So we're all Uh, I'm lost. Uh, Chair, well, uh, it's a slight revision to the way that we normally do things, Chair, is that uh, in addition to having uh, a, a proposer and seconder, the Council are now starting to record that everybody or those, the numbers who actually do approve the, mi the minutes. So if everybody who does agree that they are an accurate reflection, raise their hand, either on, on screen or so Rebecca can, uh, Beck can see it herself, then uh -huh. we, can take, we can take that number. Right, yeah. So... Uh... That's Carrie. Uh, lots of hands chair. up coming on the right hand yeah. column there. That, that's Carrie, Chair. That's Carrie by majority. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. All right, so uh, moving on to item number four matters arising from the minutes. Have we, well, matters arising? Do you want me to read through the pages? Matters arising, or we're OK on that? Uh, I think there was one matter, which was item seven, Chair, when I went through them, but unless there are others. Uh, um, there is this concern, Chair. Can I just mention a couple of things? Yeah. Um, I've highlighted here, it says members raise concerns about multi-use areas, cyclists, etc. And this is on page two. Uh, and then it says that it, it might affect the fact that older users are less likely to use these paths because of increased cycles. I wonder whether or not um, there's uh, anything can be done to um, so that doesn't happen. Because uh, I think a lot of older people do use go for walks and, and, and they are inhibited by the fact that there are increased cycles. I noticed that, in fact, in Macken now, they've got, um, uh, in, at the end of Green Row, there is, in fact, 
um, a burger van been put there and, and it used to be a walking area. Now cars can go down there. So it, 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 it seems that there's even more an increased use for, for vehicles and cycles and it, and it is very off-putting for walkers. Right. Sure, I'll, I'll respond, Chair, if, if, on, on that as far as I can. Thank you. Um, th th these are proposals that are coming from Welsh Government about uh, e extending the use, the, the usage of paths for alternative uh, other users, really, o almost doing away with the sort of, uh, you know, footpaths, bridleways, so it, it, paths which are suitable can be used by all. What it does say in there, Michael, is that the, you know, the, the paths in their current condition should be suitable for that. But no, I, I, I take on board fully what you say, and it's a representation we've made that they will be used, whether they're suitable or not by other people. Um, and there are issues that come that fall upon the local authority in particular in this, in terms of being able to maintain them. Um, I think it is a little, possibly in inverted commas, naive to assume that there aren't additional maintenance costs and the like, which the Welsh Government seem to be saying they won't be, um, from, from additional use. And it's not just that maintenance side, it's the conflict of interest that, go, that, that takes place. We have that all over the county borough at the moment where, where other uses are or aren't allowed. And there are grey areas on some paths. Um, you know, and, I, and, I, and I do feel for my rights of way staff, we're often on the, on the receiving end of this. Mm. Uh, we want uh, to do what we can to make things as safe as possible. But the, yeah. that legislation is not in as yet. OK, it's, thank, it's thank done you. Deal. I think that the use of the term common sense uh, isn't helpful because if there were common sense, we wouldn't be talking about it now. It's, uh, you know, people, whatever that is, do not use it, do they? No. Thank you. Are there any other matters arising from the from the minutes? Sorry, Phil. I said Maggie's got Maggie's got a hand up. Oh, sorry, I didn't. Uh, yeah, Maggie, that's. I think you're on mute. Yeah, that's better. I'm trying to sc scroll down to see what number on the agenda it is, but I want to bring back to our attention again conflict between cyclists and walkers, but specifically. Um, on the unauthorised trails, um, not just on Madart, even though that's um, very, very dangerous walking up there these days. NRW and our Rights of Way officers are in discussions about these unauthorised trails, but I would like us to put pressure on NRW to put limitations on the cycle tracks before they agree to negotiation with risk riders who ha you know have gone up there with digging machines putting unauthorized trails in and yet nrw is in discussion with risk riders about which trails should become authorized i don't mind one bit if they do become authorized but i want chicanes or limitations whatever you want to call them put on the cycle trails to safeguard walkers when they're on hall roads and when they're on footpaths um and i do know that they are discussing this but mean meanwhile that particular area is out of bounds for walkers who are um scared of going up there because of the, because of the cyclists and they are coming down at quite some speed and crossing rights of way. Um, I won't go up there because I took a party of walkers up there before Christmas and we were verbally abused. So, you know, I couldn't possibly lead a rambler's walk up there because I couldn't um, sign off on a risk assessment. So I do want that particular thing hurried up, please. I would like CC. BC or the local access forum to put intense pressure on NRW over this. And not just on the dart, actually, anyway, but 
on Mazart because they are considering authorising some of these trails that have been put in. Um, well, it's criminal damage. By criminal damage, they have put in these unauthorised trails. Thank you. Can I just pop in there, a sec, Chair? Um, we, yeah. we, we have we have Gemini with us today, who I know has has had in the, in the past, and probably does have specific responsibilities for for Kum Khan and Medart and that sort of neck of the woods. And we all and we also have we also have Sarah. We also have Sarah Tyndall Tyndall uh, coming in. So you do have the opportunity, Maggie, to make your views known to those who through through the laugh later later on in the meeting. Um, I, I, I I I I can see Germany gr grimacing there. You know, this is not something which is new, which is not new to them. They are obviously aware of the issues and trying to work with us and our tourism department in particular. But um, you know, you do have the the, the ability to get that message across on behalf of the LAF later on on the agenda. Um, Phil, if I may, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give feedback on the current actions which NRW are taking in relation to Maggie's query. Um, so pull me in when you want me on that, OK? OK. Right. OK, then. So if there's no other... Your hand is still raised, Maggie. Are you have you concluded? Yeah. No, we can't hear you. You're on the. the, the off okay. Chair. So there, there, there was item seven, chair, on that, in, which was um, referring to the council um, representative on the left. Um, I'll, I'll, well, I'll raise that at this point. If you recall, at the last meeting, we were, we were between cabinet members. There was a reshuffle going on. So I'd like to introduce, or rather reintroduce, Councillor Nigel George, who was who has been our representative on this for before. Um, so Nigel is, is is stepping stepping back into this role, uh, role replacing um, Councillor Ridgewell. Um, now, it has been traditional in the past, and it's, it's, it's not set in tablets of stone that the, the, the cabinet member for the council takes on the deputy chair role. However, that's not that's not a necessity. I have spoken in the broad with Nigel about this previously and his willingness to um, accept this role in the future should it should it be wanted by the, the by the local access forum itself and we do statutorily have to have a have a vice chair and he has uh accepted i'm not saying the word willingly but i will say the word accepted accepted that he will do that however i think in, in case there are others who are either here today or not who may want that role a full-on hope perhaps on, on that that what i'll do is i'll put it as an agenda item for a vote at the next at the, at the december meeting to either formalize the um appointment of nigel or alternately if somebody else if they, if they want to stand it'll be their opportunity to do that right. that's all i want to say on that chair Thanks, uh, thanks, Phil. Yeah, so that concludes matter number four. Um, moving on to uh, item number five, access reform briefing. Um, I'm going to note here that uh, either Phil or Stefan will be giving a updating there. I, I, I'll, I'll take this matter. I'll take this item, Chair. Um, but before before I start on that, it was a, perhaps a little remiss of me not to introduce Stefan Denbury um, to, to, to the to the forum. A lot of you will know him anyway through your daily work. Uh, Andy Fleming couldn't make the meeting today, so um, Stefan works with stroke for Andy. Uh, he's one of my rights of way officers. Um, so Stefan is standing in today and is, is doing is, is doing reports. Um, on, on, we'll, see, we'll run through them as we as we come to them, but various reports, sort of on behalf of of Andy Chair. So that's why that's why Stefan is here. But I think a lot of you know him anyway. So um, when he appears on screen, the face won't be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> if, if our memory from the days we actually used to meet a, 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 is good enough. Anyway, moving on to um, item five, Chair. This is um, a sort of update from the. Um, NRW access reform briefing paper that has uh, has recently be, been been um, given. Um, you'll recall, I, and I I did put a, a lengthy report up to the March meeting 
on what was going on with the Welsh government's view of, of changing things. For example, Michael spoke spoke about earlier on about the the, the uses on rights of way. There were a, a whole myriad of things that they were looking at. So they set up a sort of access reform advisory group, and that's what sort of feeds back feeds back to us. So this report really is in sort of three parts. It's a resume of of, of where we were. Secondly, some sort of appointments that have been made to the national. Uh, 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 laughs um, and thirdly the sort of program of taking things forward on various elements so dealing sort of outlining the first part uh, the members may remember that the uh, Welsh government back in 2017 so two laughs ago were looking at the whole issue of sustainable ma management of natural resources which is their sort of direction of travel and a large part of that included access and it was a whole section within that within that publication on access so following the, the sort of consultations they took up, they set up this ad advisory reform group, which was established in in 2020, of which you recall there were three expert groups set up from uh, representative landowners, public sector, whole. Oh, there were about a dozen representatives on each of those three expert groups. Um, and really what they were sort of looking at was uh, increasing the range of activities permitted on crow land, uh, increasing the range of activities on public rights of way, the procedures for managing rights of way and issues such as stock control and, how, uh, and the impacts of that. And thirdly, uh, improving communication generally, I think it's fair to say, you know, through things such as uh, online ac access maps. Um, those three panels have now prepared a whole range of reports um, which, which have been submitted. Um, the final advice report, advice report they call it, was submitted to the ministers in May 2020, May of this year. Um, now the guidance on there said they would be published by ju during July of this year. I haven't actually found those papers on site. I can find minutes of meetings, but I can't actually find those papers. So keep your eyes peeled. Perhaps you're just running a little late on those, but those advisory reports will be going on there. But there's an ongoing process um, with this, as we probably gather, and I'll suddenly come to an a, a end, of, end of the trail um, five, four or five years later down the line. So there are certain elements which these re reports are recommending that Welsh Government are saying that, that they need further investigation. Um, and I'll talk about those a little bit in, the, in, in, in a moment. The second part, in terms of some appointments which are going on, we have the National uh, Access Forum, which kind of represents all of that, uh, all 25 local um, access, access forums. Actually, it's not 25, I think it's 22 local access forums, because some have, some have combined across Wales. And they've been asking for sort of representatives to support um, or give the views of uh, our local access forums. Um, and you'll be aware from the re reports that we do that a lot of a, a lot of issues get reported to us via the national access forum rather than direct consultation with us which is why the chair goes to the national you know, our chair goes to the national access uh, access forum and their secretariat sends us stuff uh, sends us stuff direct so just for members to know and it's sort of background information and names that we're going to be coming up uh, in in the future you know our national chair remains remains john morgan who's from from over from over Ceredigion, but he's now being supported by two laugh officers it's a guy called ian mabley and those who used to work for ccw will probably know quite well or certainly his wife wife quite well he he he's from the brecon beacons laugh um, and he's our national rep and he is, is supported by a guy who I don't know called Tony Rooney who's from Pembrokeshire and he's the, 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 the deputy national ref, rep representation representative sorry um, further to that there's some support going on for NRW themselves in terms of a couple of consultations or further digging which is going going on um, for the required input from LAF, and I'll talk about those in a moment. So they've asked for two further reps from LAFs across Wales, um, whose names I don't know as yet uh, coming up. I'll, I'll report those through. <clears throat> but perhaps the most important thing is the next steps of where we're going and what, what Welsh Government are doing on, 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 on the, the, the reforms. Now, the latest briefing paper I've had on this is that um, Welsh Government or Welsh Welsh Government, yes, have, have asked Natural Resource Wales for further advice on three specific topics. Firstly, the issue of enforcing placing uh, placing dogs on short leads when in the vicinity of livestock. 
at all times of year, which is a change to the a change to the, the legislation required there. You probably all recall that there was a there wasn't it, it, it there was a strong majority in favour of that proposal from our LAF when it went through. It wasn't unanimous, but there was a very strong uh, support provided for that. Secondly, that they want to review the countryside uh, rights of way access maps, and thirdly. They were looking at the role and regulations referring to LAFs themselves. So they're the three issues that Welsh Government have asked further for further investigation. Um, this is being led by Natural Resource Wales Outdoor Access and Recreation Policy Teams, that John who, you know, who, who who's presented to us before. And those in, they, they've set up a couple of groups, again, supported by landowners, the public sector, recreational users, to look at these matters um, for both dogs on leads and the role of local access forums. They're not asking for that same procedure for the review of, 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 of the Crow maps. They'll do, deal with that slightly def differently. Um, so the, what, what, the way they're working forward on this, and they have quite a, a, quite a, a tight timetable on this, is there initially, there's going to be an initial stakeholder gathering exercise well, they're likely to come to us, and that's going to be taking place over the next couple of months. Now, whether they come directly to us as as as, as a laugh, I'm not sure, but they're certainly going to the national forum because John Morgan and and uh, um, Ian Mabley are meeting on the meeting them on the 21st of this month in the in the national context. Um, that in its own right could be quite an interesting little meeting because uh, John, John Morgan is quite a strong character, I think it's fair to say, and uh, I, I I know he's kind of felt that some of the some of the well, he, he feels two things very strongly. One, that local access forum are undoubtedly the strongest organisation that Welsh government should be dealing with and perhaps dealing with directly, um, because of the expertise that sit, sit sit on those panels and it's almost reinventing the wheel, having a second group to do it. And secondly, uh, a lot of the comments that have been made, or some of the comments he's been made, he feels are perhaps not getting up the agenda or being dealt with as as, as quickly as, as as he would like. So that could be quite an interesting meeting. But I I I I, I think all parties will get on and come come up with a way forward. Secondly, during October, there will be some stakeholder meetings uh, and followed by, uh, by the end of the year as some options or solutions papers that are going to be put out to the stakeholders for comment on that. So that might not be us commenting on it. It might just be those of the, the, those um, two, two expert groups that have been set up. So that's there for, to review the proposals they're putting forward or recommendations and for review and comment, really. And then finally, by February of uh, next year, the other stakeholders, that's a certainly us as a laugh, uh, will have input into the draft, the, the draft report that comes out, and then that will be forwarded on to Welsh government ministers for for, for their consideration how to take things forward. So that applies to, you know, say, dogs on leads and the role of laughs. The maps are being dealt with slight, slightly differently, but there is a consultation exercise going on on that. And in, in fairness, it, the, the, the maps have almost always been under review. It's just a, a case of a changing them, b formalising the way in which that's done. Um, so I would expect some form of consultation coming to us as a laugh somewhere in those processes um, on all three topics um, and not just on purely on the, the amendments to how the content of what laughs deal with and, and do it. And that will probably come in via the chair, I should imagine. So that's the, that was an update on where we were on these reforms, which are proceeding in the background, even you don't see anything in the sort of national press or anything like that going on, but they are proceeding and proceeding apace. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Uh, right, and moving on, number six, general rights of way update. Excuse me, Chair, uh, I, think, I think Michael, I think a couple, there are a couple of hands up here, um, Michael and Andrew. Can I just add, just for clarification, Phil, did you say these groups have already been set mm -hmm. out? No, the groups are being the groups are being established. I'm referring to the groups, the the, the, the two groups looking at dogs on leads and review of local access forms. They're being set up at the moment. Who is likely to be on those? The reason why I'm asking this is because I was hoping that probably somebody from one of the uh, sort of who has a nature input background. The 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 because the, uh, dog, dogs dogs cause a, a lot of disturbance to the uh, the natural world and it's particularly in the breeding season for birds and that so i think it's uh, i think it's important that there is somebody on there thank you 
I, 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 I fully fully endorse that. And of course, the ex, the expert groups, which did include representatives from the from the wildlife side of thing, have been stood down because they've done their sort of strategic level report, so to speak. And the only guidance I've seen on it, Michael, it it it, it says that they will be um, landowners, public sector, and recreational users. Now it said recreational users. It didn't say anything about uh, wildlife on there. That having been said, given given the context within which these reforms are proposed. It's all under natural resource management, which you know, wildlife is a huge part of that. You know, it's one of the key pillars of it. I would have thought I wouldn't have thought they would have been excluded, but I don't know any names. Thank you. We can, we, you know, we can certainly make that representation that, that, that you know, you know, could you please clarify what recreation does and, and that there will be sort of wildlife interests in terms of this. I can certainly put that to the to the to the chair for his meeting on the twenty first. Oh, thank you. Yes, that would be useful. OK, sorry, I got the uh, overlook there, Mike. Um, moving on, Mr. Chairman. We've got my Andrew still here. With um, losing connections here, is, this, is, there, is somebody wanting to speak? Sorry, I can't see everybody. We've, we've got we've got Andrew uh, who would like to say something, Chair. Yeah. With regards right. to do dogs on lead and really speaking, livestock worrying, it's not a devolved issue. The real rules regarding livestock actually will come from Westminster. And there is a new law coming in beginning of June, giving police increasing powers. And then it, there's a 10 minute bill going ahead by the Anglo CMP in September to try and improve uh, dog, uh, like to reduce livestock worrying. So it's a bit of a gray, it's a bit of a gray area regarding dogs on leads and livestock worrying coming from Welsh government. Yeah, I, I, th this is a thought that had crossed I'd my mind. But I, I, my understanding of it is, and I, I, I'm not saying it's 100% correct, but my understanding is the Countryside, uh, Countryside Rights Away Act, which makes provision for this, also makes provision for some devolved elements to amend that legislation through Welsh Government, and that's how they're doing it. So was that, that was the Countryside? Countryside Rights Away Act, I think, is, is, is coming right. the, the Crow Act. The Crow Act. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's my understanding of it. I'm not saying I'm, I'm I'm not guaranteeing I'm right, but that's how I'd read it and my understanding of how it was going. Okay. Thank you. Any other input? Or we or everybody's concluded there. Number six, general rights of way update. Uh, uh, Stefan or Phil? Uh, Chair, this is going to be Stefan, and perhaps it would have been a better time to have introduced him at this point rather than early on, but I think I've given Stefan a, uh, a, 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 an in introduction to that, so it's his report item, Chair. Okay, thank okay. you. Stefan? Okay, thanks very much, Chair. Um, just a, a little bit of a, a background as to what we're currently uh, dealing with. Um, at the moment, we've got a number of training opportunities uh, for ourselves to, to undertake. Um, we, we've got offer of three uh, remote training sessions with a, uh, a law firm, uh, six pump court chambers. Um, so we, we've got uh, training on uh, definitive map modification applications uh, next week. Uh, the following month then we've got uh, some training on diversion orders. Um, what that entails exactly, uh, we'll find out at the time. And uh, a month later in, in November, we've got um, training on highway creation, adoption and extinguishment. Now, whether that's more to do with carriageways than public rights away, again, we'll find out. Uh, those webinars are all free, uh, so there's, there's no costs incurred uh, with that. Um, I'm also attending two courses with the Institute of Public Rights of Way. Um, we've got user evidence, which accompanies uh, the definitive map modification order applications. Uh, that's coming up this month. And in November then, uh, again, with the Institute of Public Rights of Way, there's training for uh, drafting orders. So that's the public path orders as well as modification orders. Um, and again, I'll, I'll be attending both of those. Um, moving on to our other sort of day to day uh, work uh, with regards to conveyancing. We undertake searches on behalf of personal search companies uh, and the local land charges department. Um, as you may or, or may not know, we in the last few months or at least earlier in the year, we introduced a, a web map 
onto the council website, which indicated the location of public rights of way. Um, the majority of the personal search companies have now adopted that as their method of carrying out these searches. There's only one search company who, who still send us by email requests. Um, they're currently at about five to 10 properties a week, whereas we were probably around 50 inquiries per week. So uh, as you can imagine there, there's been a large saving in, in officer time in, in dealing with these requests. Um, searches through the local land charges department remain the same at approximately 20 searches per week um, and we carry out these searches on behalf of the land charges department. Um, moving on to uh, some other matters uh, with regards to obstructions to, to paths which I know um, are, are close to the hearts of, of many of you. Uh, we've recently issued two notices under section 137 of the Highways Act 1980 to remove obstructions from public paths. Um, the first of which um, is, is currently held in abeyance as the footpath runs uh, within a few metres of uh, a dangerous structure. So we're waiting on an application from the landowner to uh, seek the diversion of that path to take it away from the dangerous structure. Um, and we're awaiting that application, uh, which we'll follow up if we don't receive it uh, in the very near future. Uh, the second case uh, is one of encroachment over a public footpath following uh, development of a, of a property. Um, this case is also unfortunately held in, in abeyance at the moment. The owner has um, provided us with his desires, I say his desires, um, his, his wishes to submit evidence to show that the public path sh uh, has been recorded in error. Now, this is perhaps um, an unfortunate situation in that we're, we, we're delayed in, in carrying out uh, the process, but if we were to go ahead and enforce the removal of the obstruction across the path and then the evidence is compelling that the path was recorded in error, we're going to have incurred costs, the owner's going to have incurred costs and substantial works will have been carried out. So. Uh, I think it's prudent that we we get the the evidence in place uh, before we physically undertake any any further action. Uh, but the owner has been made aware that if the evidence is is not sufficient, or that we believe it it's not uh, well not sufficient to say that the the path is is not uh, to be recorded, that'll go to committee. Um, but they have been told that further action through the magistrates' court uh, is, is pending, um, and that will be a conviction. Uh, for willful obstruction. Um, moving on then, uh, planning, uh, as, as you may may know, we, we deal with planning applications, or at least we, we comment on them, provide comments to our planning department. Um, our uh, planning department have recently gone through a, a process uh, with the local development plan, uh, where they put out a call for candidate sites for the second replacement LDP. Uh, that ended on the 31st of August and our planning department are now consulting with us over submissions that they've received. Um, we've received 11 so far uh, and we're expecting sort of similar sized batches to come in, in in the near future, which we need to, to comment on. Uh, these um, uh, submissions to us uh, give us an ideal time for us to highlight that there may be public rights of way affecting proposed sites. Uh, that goes to the planning department as well as the developer or the landowner, so that they are also aware at an early stage that the development is affected by a public right of way. That allows the public right of way to be maintained available for use and prevent any unnecessary uh, obstruction of, of paths uh, due to, if you like, ignorance to the existence of a, of a path. Um, we also take this opportunity to seek improvements to existing public rights of way if they're affected by development, uh, where we can secure, for example, uh, renewed surfaces or seek contributions uh, for us to carry out uh, such similar uh, works to, to paths. Um, the public rights of way registers, these are required uh, under legislation uh, to be made public. These include uh, applications for definitive map modification orders under Section 53B of the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981. Uh, they include landowner declaration, declarations sorry, under Section 31A of the Highways Act 1980. 
and public path order applications under section 121B of the Highways Act 1980. Um, just to give you some, some basic overview figures, uh, applications for definitive map modification orders, we currently have 92 applications recorded which are in need of investigation. Um, one of those is currently with the planning inspectorate. We're having some difficulties in, in carrying out uh, what was going to be a public inquiry given the nature of, of COVID restrictions. Um, so, so that's held at the moment, uh, but we're looking to, to push that forward as soon as we can. Uh, Section 31A, the landowner deposits. There are currently uh, two deposits active in, in the authority, uh, but we have had interest from other landowners uh, so we are expecting others to be submitted. Uh, with regard to the public path orders, there are nine uh, outstanding applications with us uh, at the moment, one of which uh, is nearing completion. Uh, we have recently confirmed that order um, and that's going through the, the required notification period of 42 days. Uh, others are then in various stages of progression. Um, some uh, have already gone through the initial pre-order consultation stage, uh, with the statutory consultees and will be reported to the rights away committee or the head of service uh, as appropriate in due course uh, that's the end of my report thank you stefan everybody's all uh, noted all comments maggie and you want to comment there yes sorry you're on mute again The th not the first thing you mentioned, the um, the obstructions where you are taking legal action. Yeah. What about historic, historically, where you have sent notices to the landowner, landowner continues to have five um, illegal obstructions on, on a byway? And I know that we've had COVID, and therefore the courts are perhaps, you know, but are you planning to um, to follow that through? We 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 obviously have to follow through all obstructions. You know, you're aware this is our statutory duty to make sure that the paths are available for use. Unfortunately, we've got limited resources and our legal department to actually serve the notices now have a limited capacity as well. We're dealing with things as best we can. And yes, historic things that have been reported, they are still on our list. We've got them recorded and we will tackle them as soon as we can. Um, the matters that we've got here um, are historic. Um, they've been the, the second of which, as I said, was was a, um, a smaller development, uh, was only brought to our attention um, by way of a planning application, whereas the actual works were undertaken uh, many years ago, but it wasn't. Oh, yeah aware at the time um yeah so it's not a case of perhaps you know, if you like picking and choosing what we're doing the these are things that are brought to us the planning application um came to our attention we've followed up on that it's a case of yes it's obstructed this needs to be dealt with and the landowner in that case has, has been um i'd say less than helpful uh but has suggested that the emails that have been sent have disappeared into a junk folder, which can happen you know, in, in, in reasonableness. Uh, letters haven't reached them, which again, th they weren't sent as recorded. Um, so there is that chance. But the fact that it was highlighted that the path was obstructed, um, you would hope that that landowner would make some efforts to at least correspond with us to deal with it. Um, but I think lots of people think that if they leave it alone, it'll it'll go away. We we are very busy, you know, as, as you're aware, um, and, and we've got limited uh, sort of resources to, to tackle these things, but we will get round to tackling them uh, as soon as we can. So it's only in a way if there's a planning application or with the Abakan one, one landowner is trying to sell the property um, that the landowners are in fact forced to deal with it. That was a question. <laughs> 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 they're, they're forced because there's a planning application which sort of if you like puts it up our priority slightly yeah. in that we we have to respond to the planning department within a set time if mm. we respond to them that it is obstructed we are effectively saying that we're objecting to what's being proposed um that goes to planning committee now we haven't been involved with the planning committee to date um and i haven't followed up on the actual planning application process with 
some of these where the path is likely to be obstructed. Um, but that certainly is, is sort of higher on our priority list, if you like, because we have to deal with the planning application procedure. The same with the definitive map modification order. If there's a yeah. site and there's an application, and that DMMO will be investigated as a priority over others where there isn't, if you like, a, a planned development. So there's the, the development stage with the planning brings some sort of urgency to it, uh, which is why we, we're trying to deal with those. Thank you. OK, thank you, Stefan. Anybody got any other points they wish to comment, raise? OK, right, that uh, concludes uh, a bit from from uh, from Stefan. Moving on to item number seven. Uh, the heading is uh, uh, Natural Resources of Wales. Um, and it's got it down for either Phil or uh, Stefan to to comment here, but uh, I think uh, I think th th at this uh, juncture, I think Gemini, do you want to lead or do you want to lead uh, first, Phil? Yeah, shall, shall, shall I lead on this one? As, as, as I, I want to little, make a little plug for NRW to start off with, um, but this, it is primarily sort of Gemma's report. A couple of a couple of points, really. I I, I would just like to sort of draw attention to for laugh on. Um, a, consulta a consultation NRW are currently undertaking on the area statements. Now, again, area statements are sort of strategic documents that uh, influence on natural resource management, access, and, uh, and the like um, throughout Wales. There are seven of, the, seven of these statements, and we're, we're perhaps uh, not surprisingly in southeast Wales. Um, so at the at the moment, um, NRW are holding a consultation uh, at, at, look, at at making revisions to this document, primarily in the policy context, and they may be stepping in terms of, uh, of access. I, I, I'm not sure, but what I'd like to draw um, members' attention to, both as partners as members of the LAF and from your own various interests that you've got on here, that this consultation is taking place. So NRW are doing a, a webinar uh, this 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 coming Tuesday between uh, I think it's 10 and 11 on the 7th of the 9th. Um, it'll provide more detail of what it is that they that they are actually looking at, and they aim to review these documents um, or this you know, this document during September and certainly have their review done by the tail end of the month. All this is available on the on the, on the standard um, NRW website. So that's for your information, really, if, you, if it, it might be worth for your own interest just to have a, to have a look at that. Um, secondly, is a sort of NRW sort of officer update. Um, and a, 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 couple, a, a couple of points here. Well, welcome, Gemini. But the chair and I were speaking were speaking earlier. Uh, I noticed that Sarah Sarah Tindall has also joined us in in the background, um, and the, the chair has agreed that if there's anything that Sarah wants to sort of chip in as part of the NRW update that, that the Gemini is giving, um, then you know, she, she'd be allowed to do so. So um, I'm not going to say what. Gemini does, but I'm sure that's part of her introduction, or likely part of her introduction. But I think it's fair to say, Gemini, I'm not sure if you're the new Bob Campbell. I know Bob couldn't make it today, whether you are just standing in for Bob today, but I'll, I'll hand over to you at that point. Thanks, Phil. Gemini, the floor is yours. Many thanks, and uh, yeah, good morning to you all. Um, so, yeah, I've been uh, working at Cumcan for the last couple of years, um, and my role up until recently has been about reopening the forest drive so um you know all the recreation areas and the kind of resurfacing of the drive has um fallen kind of under me and uh the road engineering side has been peter cloak um but uh yeah so that that project's been uh quite time consuming um and we reopened the drive to the public um, at the end of June. Um, so the drive is now being managed on a day-to-day -day basis by Caffili County Borough Council through a partnership agreement with NRW. Um, so I'm still working on aspects of that project, um, which um, will go on into this com coming year. Um, but my focus now has moved more widely to the wider Kumkan forest and neighbouring Abakan forest, um, primarily uh, looking at the the footpaths throughout both of those forests um, 
and what needs to be done to bring those up to scratch, basically, as a leading visitor attraction, but also as a uh, meaningful kind of um, site for local people to use on a day to day basis. Um, so as you'll be aware, um, obviously we had extensive felling of infected larch trees, which caused the closure of the drive. Um, through the harvesting of those trees, uh, a number of paths were disrupted um, and also a number of paths were, you know, became overgrown um, through lack of kind of access and lack of resource and so forth. Um, so now my job is to basically get those paths reinstated where appropriate. So all those rights of way uh, that have been affected to basically get those reinstated, um, but also to do a wider review of the footpath offer at Kumkan and Abakan and look at opportunities for um, developing new paths where appropriate to create more kind of loops and links if you like for for people um so really to just improve the overall walking offer um so it's quite a big chunk of work and it will take time um but part of the work will also be uh, looking at where maybe the modifications are required to rights of way i don't anticipate there being many to be fair but i do think there will be some where we can look at um, modification order applications to kind of improve visitor safety um, or usability of those trails. Um, so uh, one of the big pieces of this work will be to actually look at the visitor safety of all users of Kumkan Abakan Forest. Um, I should be aware uh, there are obviously there's a lot of conflict um, between different user groups at the moment um, where you've got obviously cyclists um, who you know use trails um, inappropriately or cross trails without due regard for other users and some of that is down to personal kind of disregard um, but a lot of it is down to the need for way marking those trails appropriately you know and also including limitations on those trails where they approach rights of way um to make sure that you know the rights of way are protected from um kind of speeding bikes and so forth so yeah it's um quite a lot of kind of work um but if i can just um put you in the picture as to where i am currently with it. Um, so I've been liaising closely with Stefan from um, Kefali Rights of Way and also with Mark from Torvine. Um, so that I've got up to date uh, shape files from both of them now, um, showing me exactly the um, the rights of way on the ground, um, the, the definitive rights of way. Uh, and then I've also been liaising with uh, Maggie um, with Phil Pernell from Isloin Ramblers and with Rob Southall, friends of Kumkan Forest Drive, um, who obviously walk those areas, you know, regularly. Um, so just to get that real kind of feed in um, about what are the current issues that exist on site and um, looking at what we can do going forward to address those. Um, so my purpose in coming to you today uh, is to really kind of invite you um, to be part of this kind of project um, and I would welcome your thoughts on any proposals that we make with regards to um, modification um, order applications but also where we think there might be opportunities for new paths to improve the overall offer and I think your kind of expertise and knowledge and interest as a group would be really valuable to uh, to this project. So um, realistically, I think um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure when this group is meeting next, but uh, I think you w w meet on a quarterly basis. So um, say that's kind of December, then I would probably be looking to have something 
to present to you in November for you to kind of mull over before our the December meeting. Um, so yeah, I, I think maybe that's enough for me to talk about for now, but I'm, you know, if anyone wants to ask me a question, please feel free. So there's a few. So <laughs> um, let's see if we start with um, Ruth, um, if that's all right. Um, yes, um, I've, you've mentioned um, walkers and cyclists a lot as regards um, Kum Khan. I'm not particularly familiar with the area myself, um, but I just wondered, have you been in contact with any horse riders at all? And have you considered horse access and continued horse access to the areas when you, you're looking at developing new paths and improving current ones? Yeah, so um, I I met um, it's some months ago now, um, myself and um, Stefan and Bob Campbell met at the Caffili Rights of Way office and um, Graham Shellswell from the British Horse Society and um, another gentleman was there as well um, to talk about, you know, opportunities at Kum Khan. Now, in terms of Kum Khan on the Forest Drive side, obviously where there are bridleways, we will um, ensure that those are um, you know, maintained and, and so forth and waymarked appropriately. But the overall offer we feel would be much better on the Abakan side and the West End side, where there's much more kind of open space for those horses to enjoy a, a really good ride. Um, the issue we have with the Forest Drive side is it's already very congested with yeah multiple users so in terms of pleasurable horse experience we feel that somewhere like West End Abakan if we can look at kind of uh, improving that offer there um, would be the most appropriate um, whilst obviously maintaining the bridle ways that exist on the drive side itself. Right yes that sounds fine yes Gra Graham's a local so he knows the area really well so uh, yeah you, you've got the right person there. Thanks. Um, uh, right uh, who who uh, to go with next? Uh, uh, Michael Poynton, is it? Sorry, you're on you're mute. On. You're on mute, Michael. I'm sorry about that. Morning, Gemini. I Hi. represent um, Gwent Ornithological Society on on this laugh. Um, could you tell me regarding? Uh, you know, you said that they've been removing the diseased larches. Are, are they thinking about replanting anything? Yeah, so there's um, um, a whole kind of um, forest resource plan which has been um, drawn up uh, for the future of Kumkan Forest. Um, so I can uh, share that with the group um, by means of an email or something after this meeting, not a problem. Um, but also though that panel um, will be displayed on on site as well. I've got those panels made up and ready to go in the ground. So anyone visiting Kumkan can see what the long term um, forest resource plan. I think it's like a ten year plan initially, um, and then you know it, it, we can look at and refine things. You know going forwards, but uh, basically going forwards, we're looking at Kumkan being much more of a diverse kind of species. Um, forest rather than a monoculture which obviously it was in the past um, whilst there will be opportunities for timber production um, there's much more of a focus on recreation uh, in this new um, forest resource plan and um, increasing kind of biodiversity so a lot of plant uh, trees have been planted you know mixed broadleaf um, throughout and you know some conifers as well you know but uh, primarily the focus is going to shift quite considerably from what it used to be thank you uh, that was excuse me sorry that was my next question about uh, consideration for wildlife and I, I think that you sort of touched on that but obviously if you increase the use um, of people going there it's going to have a, a, an adverse effect on it as well but it's nice to see that you're thinking of planting uh, some more broad leaf trees as well to see see how things go the, and lastly um it, regarding signing I, i've seen some signs lately where um they're about three inches long and two inches wide and it says no cycling or keep your dog you know you people have gone past it before they can see it so i think there is a need for very clear signs 
because as you were saying about the you know whether for the horse riding and and whether you, where just where you can cycle yeah and of course whether or not you should be keeping you know the old what well, about keeping dogs on a lead and things like that yeah so it's going to be an integral part of the project i'm i'm leading on now um to get that that signage kind of in place um and very clear um to notify users as to which trail is for what purpose um so obviously there are um no walking signs on lots of the mountain bike trails but we will obviously want to make sure that there are no kind of mountain biking on the walking trails and so forth so it's um we have started some work but uh you know there are a huge number of paths um and lots of kind of interactions between the trails so we want to make sure that um at every uh, like official interaction that we have clear signage where people cannot be mistaken as to what what the path is intended for thank you okay nigel have you got any brief comments there nigel yates yes uh, yes i was I'm going to ask, it, it sounds like you've got a wonderful project going there because you've sort of got a blank canvas in a way where you can introduce new ideas. Seem to have lost contact there. Should we, should we come back to Nigel? Yeah, um, OK. Uh, if we go to Maggie, if that's OK, and then we'll... Uh, yeah, OK, you got a brief comment there, Maggie? I, yeah. I, I got um, lost. Did you catch any of that? Because I got lost and my connection went. Oh. Yeah, I think it, everybody's experiencing that today. Can you uh, hear me? What I was, what I was, the main, main, main uh, question I want to ask was, um, how, how is the funding going to be presented for this, and is there any money to actually achieve what you want to achieve, and what is the time scale? Uh, yes, in short, uh, the money, money is in place um, to do this work um, uh, for NRW. Um, you know, obviously we've invested heavily in the reopening of the drive and um, now the rest of the site needs to marry up with that level of investment in terms of, um, you know, visitor experience. So, you know, people coming to the site that the, the trails are well waymarked, they are well maintained and so forth. So um, the funding is there. And in terms of timescales, I, I think a realistic time scale you could be saying would be a year to two years to get um, things really up to scratch. Um, and I, 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 you know, I, I don't like to give unrealistic time scales. So I think I think um, a good shot at getting a really good product would be would be two years. OK, thank you. OK, thank you for that. <laughs> Maggie, have you got a brief comment? Yeah. Yes. Um, bearing in mind um, my earlier comment accentuated the negative, I do want to say that um, Germany and Davletelia um, really should have the highest congratulations for what has been achieved so far um, around the, um, the, the drive. Um, <coughs> It's not just me, the public, you know, the people who said it will never be opened are absolutely thrilled with it and people are flocking there. So, you know, well done. Uh, we really, really do appreciate what you've done so far. Thank you very much. And um, thank you, Maggie. Thank yeah, you. that's greatly appreciated. Um, and anybody else on? Uh, Councillor Williams, please, uh, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Williams, briefly. Thanks so much. Yeah, uh, Germany. Um, I'm councillor for the Argoid ward, which is the top end of Sarawi. Uh, yeah, you say the funding is in process for the bottom end of the valley. Is any of that money going to come up to us? Because we have a, a question centres and a lot of bridle ways around that needs cutting back, cleaning up. And it's a struggle to, to do these things, you know, but the top end of the valley as well. We lost a lot of large. There's a lot of work done by NRW, and we're hoping that uh, there'll be some money spent on us. Could you um could you just clarify, sorry, uh, what what um forestry areas we're talking about? Because I'm um just so I know. Uh, the forestry areas would be uh, the top end of the Sarawi Valley, 
Yeah. Argoid, holly bush. Okay. Yeah. Man ball. So um my um my colleague uh, Joanne Anstey um is the kind of senior land management officer for that area. So um I wouldn't want to comment on behalf of her, but um you know certainly um you know they are aware of the issues that exist in their land management areas. Um and so I imagine that as with our other forests, they are part of a wider site management plan and strategy in kind of how how to maintain those trails, um, you know, going forward. But like I said, I wouldn't like to comment um, on behalf of Joanne, but um, I'll certainly put your question to Joanne um, and perhaps she can, um, uh, you know, get in touch with you directly if that's OK. Yes, great. Thanks. Uh, email. Yeah, great. The, um, Tiffany, yeah, thanks. Um, does anybody else? I'd like to uh, make a comment, if I may, uh, as chair. Um, I've had the opportunity to go around the, uh, the forest drive, and I was absolutely uh, amazed at the transformation. It has uh, uh, exceeded all my expectations. In fact, I took visitors around from East Midlands, and they were absolutely enthralled by it. Fortunately, we had good weather on the day, and the views which we enjoyed were absolutely, well, mind blowing. You know, you can sort of look over, <laughs> look and see what they're having for tea in England. <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah. uh, really, uh, re really wonderful. And, and having it, uh, I, I remember it as an old um, forest track. Uh, I think there may have been some plot spulges of tarmac in places, but now to have a hard surface all the way around certainly made it made it a lot easier and obviously it's such a temptation for for cyclists as well but hopefully the numbers of uh, the road visitors will keep the uh, you're closing shortly for the winter session um yeah so i'm um, basically on the first of november uh yeah. the drive will be open on weekends only and weekends. that's where weather permitting oh, and, right. that, yeah. and that's till the end of march then um yeah. because obviously the ice and the fog um yeah. are a real issue um, but what I wanted to say with regards to the uh, success of the drive project, um, I really feel that it is down to the involvement of local people and the ideas that local people um, and the passion of local people um, to get the drive reopened um, and to kind of contribute ideas to what would work where and why. Um, and particularly the, on the accessibility side of it, um, you know, we really wanted to draw upon uh, how we could make the drive more accessible. Um, and uh, it's been wonderful to engage with all different manner of people, um, you know, families with children with additional needs and parents with additional needs um, came up on the drive and, and informed me about different things that we've tried to integrate. Um, so. For me, that's been the success is the, that kind of involvement of people. And that's where you really can deliver then what people want. When you know what people want, you can kind of um, work with people to deliver that. So, yeah. Well, one of the uh, things that my my guests uh, pointed out was just the the little things, uh, the provisions for for barbecues on on the benches and to 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 to, to avoid uh, creating further damage to you know, burn marks on them. It's just just the little points, and uh, you know that was sort of well, well well received. Just going on to the very briefly um, into the Abercorn Forest. There will you be cutting in the Gwythyn Valley? Um. Yes. Um, so right. yeah, the, yeah, that that will that will form part of that uh, that project. Yeah, because uh, yeah. what what we basically want to do is to try and um, I think what lockdown has really um, emphasised is people um, enjoying uh, connecting with the countryside on their doorstep. So mm -hmm. part of this project, we really want to try and encourage people to access the forestry from their doorstep. Um, and where possible on foot or or cycle, whatever, yeah. um, and to, um, to really waymark things well from the communities to yeah. enable that access to happen. Yeah, because I, I was walk. I, I took the opportunity of walking up there uh, a couple of months back, and there's a tremendous amount of motorbike damage to the 
to the to the valley floor there. It's uh, absolutely horrendous what uh, what what has been done there. Um, yeah. Is is there a, a is there an email address that we can sort of send comments to rather than using up this uh, our valuable time this morning? Um, let me. I I believe there is a, a direct email relating to um, off-road motorbike issues. Um, so let me find that out and I can I can feed that in if that's okay. Okay, yeah, that, that's yeah. fine. Does anybody, any other f further comments? Uh, thanks very much indeed for your contribution there, uh, Germany. Um, Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I, I take it we got one, I take it's a legacy hand you've got up, Maggie, unless there's anything else you want to say. Yeah. I'll take it there's not. Um, so sorry, Phil. Could I could I just check um when when do you want me to uh, speak about the unofficial trails? Um, I'm happy to do that whenever. Um, well, when you say whenever, is that is 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 that now or is that at the next meeting or what no, would you prefer? No, today. So obviously Maggie had a query earlier, so I just yeah. wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got I've got a couple of queries. I I would take I would take the queue as now. Okay, great. Okay, so um, uh. I had an email yesterday, so from Peter Cloak, who is the uh, team leader for Southeast Land Management, um, to basically confirm that um, chicanes uh, will be placed on the unofficial trails at Kum Khan, uh, beginning at the end of next week or the week after. Um, so to confirm, they will be on the, the unofficial trails themselves, not on the rights of way. Um, to obviously maintain that, you know, legal free flow um, through the right of way. Uh, Peter also has emphasised to risk of riders that this kind of uh, putting in chicanes on the unofficial trails is a temporary measure whilst we review the long term future of the, you know, of the site. Um, so they're not under any illusion that this is a done deal, um, but we basically are permitting these chicanes to go in now um, to for visitor safety um, whilst we are looking at the longer term, you know, review of the of the site. So is is that is that okay, Maggie, in terms of answering what you, what you wanted to know? Yes. I am thrilled to bits. I would prefer risk of riders put them in and paid for them, but um, this is the second best option. Just to show that risk of riders are good custodians of NRW land. You know, that would be a way of them showing that um, they can be trusted. But thank you very much. I am really pleased. The, well, thanks, thanks for that. Um, Sarah, do you want to add anything further to what uh, your colleague has, uh, has spoken about, or is it, uh, or we more or less come to a, a close on that item? No. Okay, then. So uh, we will consider it being closed. Um, uh, yeah, I, if, if I've got a couple of secretarial questions here. Okay. Um, the, 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 firstly, in terms of uh, Maggie's comments, are, are you, just for clarity, are you happy that um, Germany has, has got the sort of message in this capacity through this forum regarding the sort of unofficial works going on, or were you seeking something, some sort of ratification from this forum to send something formal to Germany, or are you happy for the message to be passed on from the verbal discussion we've had so far? Well, now that the chicanes are being put in, we obviously don't need to pressure NRW to put the chicanes in. Right. So, okay. yeah, thank you. And and secondly, for you for you, Jeremy, I was a little, a little uncertain. Are you are you seeking uh, um, as as part of the project a representative of this LAF? Um, for. Oh, what, sorry. Can you clarify what you what you mean yeah, there? You sorry, Phil. You, 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 earlier on, you said as part of the uh, um, 
ongoing development plan for the site was going on. You know, invited in, you put an invite out to be part of that project to the LAF. I was just yeah. a little unsure whether you took the people as individuals there or whether you wanted a formal representative of the of, of the access forum. Um, what, what your no, preferences? Yeah, I I think well, so um, I think it would be the the LAF as as a group. Um, so what I'm looking at doing is obviously um, emailing the LAF um, with some proposals um, that can be considered ahead of when you next meet. Um, but just to be clear as well, I'm not replacing Rob uh, Robert Campbell at this meeting. Um, I'm I'm here today to introduce the footpath project. Um, and uh, that's my capacity with it within this group. Um, yeah. With regards to the unofficial trails at Kum Khan, uh, that is a separate piece of work to what I'm actually doing, but I'm liaising closely with David Latelier and Peter Cloak um, and uh, the other relevant officers on that um, to make sure that where our work coincides, that we've got that clear communication. So. Um, Maggie, your representations have been to David um, up until now, and, and that will continue as you as you know going forward. And likewise, if anyone else, you know, uh, it, it would be David uh, in the first instance. Thank, thanks, Jeremy. I just wanted to clarify you didn't want a formal representative for us to, to talk to. That's fine. That that works perfectly well. Thanks. Great. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for for the contributions there. Yeah. Um, moving on to item number eight, the integrated impact assessment in relation to the rights of way. This is Stefan, uh, Jeff. Is, uh, who's, uh, is it, uh, Phil reporting there or Stefan? Stefan. I'll, I'll be taking this, Jay. Thank you. Um, right, just a, a little bit of a, a background. Um, as part of our reporting that we, we do to the rights of way committee and to head of service uh, and delegated powers, uh, formally, uh, there was a, a form that we uh, completed, which was called the Equalities Impact Assessment. Uh, this uh, basically ensured that we considered um, every aspect of what we were doing on different people and, and their abilities. Um, there's a whole host of things. Um, this was effectively replaced uh, at the end of March uh, this year with, with a new uh, system called the Integra Integrated Impact Assessment. Um, now, this is a similar system, but it goes into more depth uh, as to what we need to, to put into that. Um, just just to sort of, I, I've, I've got a few notes here, which I'm, I'm, I'm just scanning through because I, I don't think I need to particularly say everything, but particularly the reports that we put up uh, where these are relevant, uh, are generally public path orders for, for diversions, et cetera, uh, making definitive map modification orders to add paths to the definitive map, uh, but also for um, the inclusion uh, of additional limitations. So we're talking structures, gates, et cetera, over public rights of way, uh, we take these to head of service and delegated powers uh, at the moment. Um, these need to be consulted on uh, as part of the integrated impact assessment. Uh, that's that's a requirement. What we're thinking is is that um, public consultation is obviously uh, a fairly long process and can really muddy the waters. Uh, when it comes to the matters of limitations on public rights of way, we are closely uh, constrained by legislation. Uh, there's a British standard, 5709, 2018, uh, which dictates structures have to be the least restrictive uh, in, in a list, in a, in a scale. Uh, they have to be of a set standard. Uh, there's all manner of things that have to be complied with, so they are very tightly tied up in, in what we can do. Um, what is is thought at the moment is is that perhaps the the local access forum may well have a role in this consultation uh, instead of a more wider public consultation, uh, so that we can fulfil our um, remit and under the uh, integrated impact assessment uh, to show that there has been a consultation, but this consultation may well be with the local access forum uh, instead of the the public at, at large. Um, so this is something that uh, you know, we can discuss 
uh, and perhaps take some consideration and, and come back to uh, at another time. Any questions, please? OK, thanks, Stefan. No comments. So anybody want any anything to say there? Maggie, <laughs> very briefly. Would this, would this preclude consulting with Ramblers and the Open Spaces Society and the British Horse Society? Well, as you're represented on the local access forum, you would take that part of consultation. So what we're, but we're I'm hoping... not. I'm not. I'm not representing the Open Spaces Society here. Yeah, right. Okay. Even though they recommended that I am part of the local access forum, it's. I think I'm right that I am here as Maggie Thomas, not right. okay. representing. Yeah. That's understood. Um, th this is for consideration by by yourselves as as a group. Um, mm. This this is a new process that we've got. As, as I said before, you know, we, we're lacking resources and time to do things. If we have every application for a new structure comes in and we have to go out for four week consultation with the public and take that on board, that's going to massively impact on our time to do other things, um, which, as you can appreciate, you know, we, we don't have much time to do the things uh, that, that we need to be doing. So perhaps the less consultation with the public we do, for this point, I'm going to say it's for the better, but to speed up the process, obviously the local access forum is, is formed of a good mix of um, stakeholders uh, and, and might well give us a, a good representation of, of the general feeling. Yeah, but we yeah. meet four times a year, you know, um, you wouldn't get a quick response. You wouldn't, you just wouldn't get a quick response from the local access forum, would you? I, I think if I can if I can chip in there, Chair, yep. I think um, the, yeah. the, the the two things here. One, this is subject to a separate report. We're opposite the time to sort of work this new process through in our mind. But what we what we were um, mulling over was the you know not the need for every report to come to the local access forum, but for certain sort of criteria, certain types of modification changes that there would be a sort of carte blanche in inverted commas that the, the, the um, forum would support them. This is all subject to a separate report. We as officers haven't thought it through or prepared a report yet, but it would be subject to a separate report here for approval, um, the protocol for the approval of the local access forum in any event. Okay, thanks, Phil. Any further comments there? It's, uh, right. Uh, item number nine is uh, planning. I'll, I'll, I'll take I'll, I'll take this chair. It's it was really um, this again. It's a, a, just an information item for, for for members, an awareness item. You know, hairs on the back of the neck sort of item really. Um, Stefan sort of outlined what's happening with the with, with with the local development plan, and this is a critical moment for that at the moment because. Um, all the candidate sites that they're called are being submitted at the moment. Those are areas which want to be considered for development, uh, for, for, for any sort of reason, really, physical development. Um, obviously, we get far more of these things coming in than, 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 than get approved, but this is a sort of desire list, list from the public and developers out there of where they would like to build. So, you know, please keep your eyes, you know, peeled on the on the local development plan if you have an interest in those sorts of things but what we are noticing is as part of the sort of wales development plan which was a sort of overview document that welsh government prepared i'm not sure if they've actually adopted it yet they put forward you know proposals where perhaps renewable energy would be best cited within wales and various transport nodes areas for residential development commercial these sorts of things in a, in, in a broad sort of very broad what, what used to be a, a structure plan um, and and Caerphilly, uh, particularly the south of the county, but it seems to be a bit of a bit of a hub that that has been identified on that. So I just thought I'd draw your attention to a few things which were were going on at the moment in terms of renewable energies in 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 particular. Uh, um, we've got you know, some some of the council are, are partially driving forward quite a large solar solar farm proposed for above. Penrowl um, on, on, on the mountain there in, in, in terms of seeking to generate more renewable energy and meet our, our climate change obligations. But we've also just I've seen something come in for a large scale um, 20, 20 turbine um, uh, wind farm on Munnith Eglis Seelan. 
Um, and these are big turbines that they're, they're considering up there, 200 metres, which as far as I'm aware would be the biggest turbines in certainly in, in South Wales. So that's something to, you know, to, to keep your, your eyes peeled for if you're interested in those. Again, it might be something that has to be reported back to, back to the LAF. Um, I, I, I really haven't got any indication yet whether there's implications for you know public access and like on, on, on those. But we've also got a couple of um, land restoration schemes in, 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 the, in the pipeline, it would seem. We've got one up at Cumbargard, um, which in, in fairness is a, is a fairly soft engineering type uh, project up, up, up uh, above Vokru. And we've also got something coming in for coal recovery on Bedworth Tips, where I've seen a environmental impact assessment. Now, undoubtedly on that one, there will be impl implications for public access. Um, you know, ideally at the end of the day, we would have much improved public access linking, linking, uh, um, you know, perhaps Bedworth Riverside Park or the Caffili Basin generally with the Sahawi Valley Country Park. But there's a there's a process in between. Um, so it was really to draw your, your your attention that there being several quite large scale planning issues going on in the background, which may have some impact on on on, on access both in the short and long term. So that that's all that was, uh, Chair. Was to let our residents know what's sort of going on. Right. Thank you, Richard. Any questions there? I think uh, Maggie, you got a, a word or two. I just Bedworth Tips is is that the large tips um, at Man of the Greek, where yes, there is um, a lot of scrambling activity. Yeah, on the mountain top or on the valley side. Yeah, yeah that that it. it's, it's it's basically the tips you see above Bedworth. Uh, so it's Man of the Greek, Man of the Dim Life. It's up. It's that southern end of it. Yeah. So okay. it's a, it's the one on the mountain top then, is it, Phil? Yeah, as so it's, to a, the... it's a very visible, the very visible tip. Yeah. All oh, right. But Mac and Tip is quite visible as well, in fairness. Not, but it's the one above. It's the one above bed, which, which kind of links across. If you were to draw a straight line, I guess it hit Kumvelinvach, going across there. So it's been... Mac and Tip is cross geese tip fell. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's river, river you've got, Maggie. I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, all the coal went up from Risca Colliery to make those tips. And Ruska Colliery was in cross keys. <laughs> Sorry, I'm digressing. <laughs> I don't okay. the residents of Mac and so they get all the rubbish from cross keys then. <laughs> okay, thanks very indeed for, for, for that. Um, number 10 is the uh, transport for Wales level crossings in the Rumley Valley. Got any the brief words there, Phil? Uh, this, is, this, this, is, this is Stefan. Um, oh, on Stefan. Well, back to me again. Um, yes, this is just a, a brief um, item that, that that's coming in um, on our radar at, at the moment um, with regards to um, primarily the metro, uh, the South Wales metro that's uh, under um, underway at the moment. Um, we had um, a presentation uh, on the 1st of July from the Office of Rail and Road, the ORR, and the Rail Safety and Standards Board, the RSSB, um, which gave a, um, a bit of a presentation on health and safety on Britain's railways and, and in particular relevant to us uh, level crossings. Uh, now we've got a number of public rights of way on the line from Cardiff to Rumney uh, which cross at the level. Uh, these will be looked at and assessed uh, as, as a health and safety um, uh, point of view uh, and what effectively the rail authority are looking to do is to mitigate um, increased perceived dangers um, from uh, the, the new trains um, that, that they're proposing. Um, effectively what they're looking at is that trains will become more frequent, uh, they will likely become faster and I think what they're also um, stating is that they'll also be electrified, so may well be quieter than the current diesel um, trains that are, that are used at the moment. Um, following the presentation, we were approached by uh, a consultant working on behalf of Transport for Wales, um, and this was to highlight um, known level crossings to them uh, and make sure that uh, they'd highlighted everything uh, that we also had as well that, that may well be affected. 
Uh, we have identified five level crossings uh, which serve public footpaths uh, on, on the line between Cardiff and Rumney uh, within the county, Caerphilly County. Um, and, and as I said, uh, Transport for Wales are currently carrying out investigations um, regarding these uh, and, and the safety risk assessments that they're, they're doing. Um, effectively, we don't know what will be proposed. Um, it, it's basically a case by case basis uh, as to whether there are uh, ways of mitigating the hazards. Now, on, on their presentation, they showed uh, sort of red and green crossing lights as, as you would uh, you know, a pedestrian crossing on a road um, with, with sound hazard notifications and things as well for perhaps the visually impaired uh, as, as one measure to the other end of the, of, of the scale um, with the potential to divert the path um, along another route that wouldn't need the, the level crossing. So they're going through a, a process at the moment where um, they were going to reconsult with us. Um, we, we were expecting it early this month, um, so I might well uh, just touch base with our um, contact there to see what's happening. Um, but of course, as soon as we've got any information with that, then we can bring it back um, to, your, to yourselves for uh, awareness uh, and possible comment on, on what's proposed. Um, but at the moment, there, there's nothing set in stone. Uh, there's no um, uh, present expectations. Um, sort of everything is on the table, although I, I think the rail authorities um, willingness or, or perhaps ability to fund structures, be they tunnels or, or footbridges, um, may well be limited uh, given the cost of, of such uh, structures, but uh, we'll wait and see what they say. Thank you. Thanks, Stefan. Any comments? Anyone who wants to add very briefly? Uh, Maggie, what's your a few words? It was an attempt to extinguish a right of way um, in van. There, you know, there are styles either side, and I was consulted about that. And the, um, I think the application came from a group of residents who said that it was too noisy because because the trains sounded their horn. Every time they went past there, the people were saying that it was too noisy. Yeah. So network rail can't really say now that um, you know that the, they the trains actually might be quieter, mm. but the fact that they apparently have to you know um, mm. make a noise every time they pass this, and I know on that particular one there would be local. Um, opposition to closing that right of way because Network Rail's idea was to send them up the road yeah. and local people said that was very dangerous. All the others, you know, the other four I have no knowledge of. Mm. Yeah, the, 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 the one in Van, um, which is um, it was just north of the Caerphilly Tunnel, um, as you say, was the subject of an application to extinguish the path um, because of the um, I'm trying to think what it what it was the sort of environmental impact that the residents were experiencing with the, uh, the with the whistle boards. Um, as I said, all cards are on the table at the moment with with proposals. There's there's nothing firmly set in stone, but that obviously sets some form of precedent in in that it didn't go through the the complete process. Um, so they may well look at a, another take. Um, I don't think I would speak out of turn, but I, I think there was. Um, the possibility was mentioned of um, redirecting the path um, over the road bridge, um, but also I think there's possibility there of including a structure, standalone footbridge adjacent to the road. But that's that that again that's not set in stone. I'm not I'm not don't quote me on that one. But I think that well may well have been mentioned. Um, the the other op, uh, level crossings. Um, from, from my memory, uh, are in Lambradach, um, I think Tirabirth, and then there's another one in Rumney, which is uh, just south of Rumney Station. Um, so that there's there's opportunities and options um, to to deal with those, but uh, we're we're waiting on on what the consultant comes back to us. 
OK, thanks, Stefan. Uh, right, moving on. Uh, grants and funding. Was, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll you, take, uh, I'll take, take that. that yeah. Phil? yeah, that's me. In fact, I think it's me right through to the end of the agenda now. OK, that. well, I'll, I'll let you. <laughs> Let you flow. <laughs> I won't interrupt. <laughs> I wouldn't go quite as far as that. In, ter in, in terms of grants, there's not a, a massive amount to um, re report on these. The, the council has been awarded an, uh, an access improvement grant from Welsh Government, I think is about £65,000 for the coming year. Um, and that's you know, uh, uh, spread across the whole of the county borough. And it's primarily towards access improvements. Um, accessibility improvement was slightly different sort of interpretation and, and those sorts of things. So I know the um, and, and Andy's list he put together includes included sort of replacing some of our, our wooden footbridges, you know, replacing stiles with gates, um, removing of some barriers. He came in with um, uh, with, with, a, with a, a tranche of works on those. Um, we haven't put any new specific applications in for funding um, but there may well be some additional funding coming from internal sources and uh, previously uh, successful grants um, i know one thing that, that the um, forum might be pleased pleased to hear previously mentioned about the sort of under resource in rights of way and you know and, and, and you hear about it from us quite regularly that, that i have put in to have a shared apprentice for two years to, to to support that team so i'll have to see whether that that that's successful um, on top of that, the Gwent Green Grid Partnership, that's the, the Pan Gwent um, initiative I've spoken about previously. They have some apprentices coming up on um, rights of way. Um, I, I think the key message I've got here is they've they've advertised. In fact, I think they probably interviewed now for uh, a countryside uh, ranger coordinator, which is basically the rights of way thing uh, as the focus is on access. Um, and under there are four trainees initially for a period of a couple of years again now i'm very keen that kafili gets its share gets at least one of these trainees i don't want them all to be sort of from hypothetically torvine or wherever it may be so if you know people who are interested in, in in this sort of thing let me know and i can forward on the details in advance of any applications be uh, any adverts being put out so the, the the partnership know that there are people in kafili you know who, who would be interested in, in in these posts so please let me know on that um, further to that, the um, public service, the Caffili Public Service Board, may have some uh, some money coming forward for green infrastructure, which would include um, potential access works. That's not that's not um, guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. But I think it's, uh, it, I, I have mentioned previously, there's going to be a revised setup for the Public Service Board. Again, I've, we've had a report from the Public Service Board previously um, in that they're moving towards a county-wide one rather than and the rather than a fairly specific Public Service Board. Um, now, there's a two-year transition period um, when we'll be running, running with, with both. Um, but what it is fair to say is the noises we're making at the moment um, within Gwent, the environment is going to be a very strong um, theme in there. Um, a couple to that, of course, is the sort of health and well-being and use of the outdoors is a major, major push on that. And I have to make an apology here that I wanted to phone Dave Llewellyn yesterday and didn't get around to it and ask if he wanted to say something in terms of some of the initiatives that he's been working on. Um, on there. He's got some very interesting and exciting schemes along with the health board so if if, if Dave is me I don't know if they wanted to say anything to start with but there may there may well be an opportunity for him to add something here if you want Dave okay thanks Phil yeah I'll just come in very briefly thanks for that and don't 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 worry about not phoning me I know how busy you are and we're all very busy very quickly we've um, um, been running out a nature well-being prescribing uh, pilot with a number of surgeries across um, the Caffili County Borough Council area. Uh, so that's the GPs and also the psychological wellbeing practitioners. Um, and we've linked those with a network of outdoor uh, activity providers uh, over the last, probably uh, we've, we've met over the last few months and, and come together to put together a package of um, activities that people can be referred to via their GPs or via the psychological wellbeing practitioners. And we are evaluating that pilot at the moment. Um, 
it's now been ongoing for the last few weeks. We've done some filming as well, and we've just collected uh, some of the evidence from both the providers and also the W, uh, the PWPs and the GPs, for example, in the surgeries. The idea behind it is, of course, and I think Gemini referred to this earlier on, is that um, what we've seen during the pandemic, of course, has been a much uh, greater increase, in fact, of people um, using their uh, available green spaces, particularly those of, uh, adjacent to them. Um, so really, that the idea is that we want to encourage uh, people to um, get themselves availed of the, the well-being benefits, health benefits of being more active in their outdoors. Um, but we fully realise that for some people, they're probably not as well um, involved or engaged as others in terms of understanding what those opportunities are, where they can go, and having some assistance, if you wish to say that, uh, in order to take part in those activities. So, um, as I say, we've got a network of providers. Uh, they put on the activities. We've made a very, very simple referral system through a coordinator, and uh, the uptake has been good. It might not sound huge numbers to you, but we had about 41 referrals through that system. And as I say, for those people who are not um, as well versed uh, in, you know, using their outdoor spaces, be they local or slightly further afield, uh, this has been a route whereby the GPs and the PWPs can refer people, particularly those with sort of low level mental health issues or um, anxiety, but also in some cases, physical issues as well. And the feedback we're getting is really, really positive. So thanks to everybody who's been involved in that and also on, on you have. Um, we'd really like to see, for example, Kumkan uh, and other hubs, the country parks, Penafta, uh, et cetera, um, be much more greatly used in that respect as well. And I think that you know, this is a way that we can really improve the health and well-being of our communities or support them to improve their own health and well-being um, uh, go, going forward. And I, I, as the health board is really in, um, interested in this agenda and really wants to push it forward, uh, and we will work with local pharmacists, etc., to really push this out as well going forward. So there's a lot of interest uh, building on other things that are happening here in Wales uh, going forward with, with, with this nature well-being prescribing. Thanks, uh, David. Yeah, uh, so to, 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 conclude, to conclude the report on grants is uh, uh, just a couple of things I'd like to mention um, from previous approvals we've had. Um, Dave just mentioned Penalta, um, and I, I, again, I've spoken to this about this project at length previously. The, the Penalta proposed Penalta Visitor Centre, um, which would be sort of partially used as a, a health hub as well as sort of for more general environmental stuff. That's currently out to tender, so we're going to know the scores on the doors on that one, whether we have uh, sufficient funding to proceed with that one uh, in about a month's time. So we're looking at a project sort of where it's certainly over a million pounds, so circa sort of one to one and a half million pounds proposed there. So uh, we'll have a, a very good steer on that in the next in the next month. And secondly, uh, I'm pleased to say the Money of Mine project, which I've, uh, which has sometimes been reported as the Adventure Triangle, which is a joint project between us and, and Torvine Council. Um, the, the contracts have been signed on that now, and that's about uh, improving the uh, the, up, the uplands between the. Um, well, the Caffili and Cumbrana, effectively. Um, that's signed, and a large proportion of that is in terms of upgrading access over and across the mountain on that. So with a bit of luck, by the time we have the next forum, we'll be having uh, contractors on site down there. I'm pleased to say it's local contractors who have won, won that project. But by way of a, 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 a blast from the past, our former secretary, Norman Liversuch, I had an email from him in this morning for those who may be interested. Um, the Tumbalam Society have just finished their archaeological dig, so if you, anyone have any interest in that, have a look at their site because they've found some interesting stuff up on there in terms of the sort of population and how that site has has, has developed over the over the millennia. So, if anyone interested in that, that report is just being put onto the Tumbalam website. As in all good contracts, mind the, 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 the there'll be con contractors. The archaeological trust will be coming back next year. It seems to do more more digging on there. Okay, thanks, Phil. Uh, number twelve, the Ramblers Volunteering Initiative. Ramblers Volunteering Initiative. Yeah, right. Uh, um, 
this, 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 this one has partially come around as uh, from some emails I've had off the chair on what on the on the roles that volunteers play within Kafili. Um, but the Ram Ramblers Cymru um, have, have been successful in securing funding um, for a, a project called Paths to Wellbeing. Um, Oliver Weeks, uh, Wicks, sorry, Oliver Wicks is, is, their, is their project officer in South Wales for that. Again, some years ago, I reported that we were supporting the Ramblers project uh, uh, through their, their, their chair, Lady Angela Charlton. Um, but at that time, the scheme wasn't successful. What we said at that time is that we would, Caffili as a council, would host one of their operatives um, to basically develop um, community links to improve access and, and, and rights of way. Well, I'm pleased that application has now been has been approved. I haven't had any detailed discussions with Oliver or, or, or Angela about how that how that is going to pan out in the Caffili context, but it's just so that you know that there are going to be officers in place through that organisation trying to get communities involved in, in, in rights of way work. Um, you know, they'll be looking at things such as um, creating new paths, restoring paths, maintenance, signage, and general sort of environmental works. They'll be providing some, some training and equipment for, for these groups. So you know, please, please spread the word that the Ramblers are going to be looking for support for this. Um, and you know, it gives, basically it gives us all an opportunity to perhaps start to showcase our own environment. So if you want more uh, information on that, it's, it's, it's quite a straightforward web, web, web page. It's just path to wellbeing at ramblers.org.uk. And as I say, they're looking to work through community, count, primarily to work through community councils and established groups. So, you know, that, that's um, kind of a feather in the cap for the Ramblers. And I know Alison Palmer isn't here today. Um, from 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 Garvo, but Garvo want to express their you know, strong support for this project. That that that's been um, said to me previously. In fact, you let the let the, the, the chair know this. So that's what's going on with volunteers. Hopefully, not just through apprentices and the like, but we will be able to get some support to help help our help with access in the in in the coming couple of years. Thanks, Phil. So there's no objections even to an individual rambler going out with the secretaries and uh, opening the path or uh, clearing the way. <laughs> <laughs> As I've said before, I take a pragmatic view of this. <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks. Um, anybody got any comments or wish to add or any questions for Phil? No? Right. Um, Kefili Challenge Walk. Pretty challenge. Very quick report on that. I, I'm, I'm pleased to say that it was uh, held successfully on the 10th of July. It was up in Rumley this time, so uh, people had the chance to look at the heads of, heads of the valleys area. I think I, I'm not sure of the precise number, but about 420, I believe, uh, attended that. So it was well well attended, and we had some very very good feedback to that. Um, I was hoping Ali Evans was here because I specifically wanted to thank thank her and and CAG Kefili Activities Group for the support they gave us through this. Would be I think it's fair to say it'd be almost impossible for us to run it without their their support, and they were very good. Um, and of course, this this year, you know, logistics were an absolute nightmare with COVID and 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 and, and social distancing, etc. So it was an awful lot more preparatory work and safety checks that had had, had to be done, and they, they did an absolutely fantastic job on doing that. Um, and let's just let you know, I think next year we, we, we're reverting to the Tumbalum track. I think it's their turn again next year. I haven't got a date for it, but I've obviously passed that on when I got it. But the two messages there, one, a good walk this year, which was well attended. And secondly, big thanks to CAG and the volunteers who supported us on this. Anybody want to add question, comment? No? OK. Oh, very quickly, we come to the almost the end um any other business i've got one item i'd like to uh please like to raise, but let that everybody else go first Jay. i see june Thanks. has got a hand up yeah yes uh, hello all right hello. Uh, where are we oh, I'm lost yeah hello june. may i ask a question yeah go on go ahead june what's your hello. Uh, um, I'm sorry, my connection completely dropped out. So if I could just briefly go back to item 11, I had a question I would like to ask Phil. 
because I didn't have the opportunity to do that. When Go that ahead. Was being Go ahead. Um, it's great that there's a funding available for access, but what is the maintenance funding looking like at the moment? Because it's very well making access better for people, but if the actual condition of the paths, certainly in my area, in the Manmole area, are very, very poor, it's no good making people more accessible for people if the paths themselves are in not fit for purpose condition. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and, and the point is not only noted, but well, well, well noted from years of experience on this. There's no real additional maintenance budgets uh, per per se, June. What we have to, you know, what we have to try and do is, uh, should we say, bend the program to try to sort of get get this grant funding to support um, access improvements whilst getting some maintenance done as part of it. I think it's uh, it, 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 it's fair to say, but no, it, it, I'm, I'm sorry to be sort of a doom merchant, but there's no sort of significant maintenance budgets um, coming in from that. It's very difficult to get um, a maintenance pot of money um, rather than sort of something to create something which is new, glitzy or replacement. So. No, it, 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 there's no sort of new stack of money coming in directly for maintenance, June. Right. How does the council reconcile that then with that they have a statutory duty to maintain the paths? Um, we maintain them as best as we can, I think, is, 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 is the blunt truth of the matter. Um, the, the, there's never an underspend on this sort of maintenance side budgets uh it, it's a case we we, we we fight for more and get it in as and when we can okay thank you yeah you know one of the perhaps i would supplement that by saying one of the sort of initiatives that we, we we've taken is to sort of split split rights of way into sort of the legislative arm which stefan and, and and andy work on and the rights and um, the rights of way maintenance which is you know done through parks the idea of that being that they probably have got more resources available to them to be able to get out and and, and do the works. Um, whether that's made any significant improvement, I, I I don't know. I'd like to think it has, but there's so much work to be done out there. It's it's a it's an ongoing battle. From my personal experience, from the little I know, from when parks took over, certainly in this area, the because rights of way used to be brilliant. Um, when the, the rights of way team were responsible um, or the funding was direct to them. But um, since the parks have taken over, there doesn't seem there seems to be a real drop in the um, attention to maintenance. Um, but I, I, you know, it, it, it's someone else's responsibility, so I can't I can't really comment on that. I will I can certainly pass the message on that, um, and I have done on several on several queries that you've had um, from, from from both yourself and Graham that you know works that need to be done. Uh, I'll, I'll pass that message on again, but it's not something I can directly influence myself now. Who is responsible then for the funding for maintenance? The well, th th there's a core fund that comes directly as, as a council sort of as a council there's an, there's an allocation for rights of way maintenance uh, and that goes across to the parks department and that element which is jonathan davis his um he, and he has a team and I, the names of or, or whom i don't know but i know mark gibbons who was a traditional rights of way officer is part of that team yes is that mark the warden yeah mark the warden as, 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 as he's known yeah he's now sort of uh, part, uh, part of a rights of way maintenance team okay thank you sir uh, sorry, can I just say I have to leave the meeting now, uh, Mr. Chair. So, goodbye. Yeah, everyone. Maggie's indicated as well. Can Michael go ahead, Maggie? Or, or can I just? Would it be a good idea <clears throat> if someone from Parks came to talk to the local access forum? Because it seems ridiculous that um, rights of way are a massive part of access but phil has no um, you know has no authority to to um guide them to clearing the rights of way should we ask them i think that I, would I, be I, an excellent idea. 
I've, I've, I mean, I'll certainly ask Jonathan or one of his operatives to, um, you know, Jonathan probably I'll ask to attend the, the, the next meeting if possible, and so he can give his perspective of, on it. Um, what, what kind of as, as the system works, and I do want to, I do want to change this, but um, Stefan and Andy still sort of register all of the sort of complaints and issues that, ca that come in, but that's that's where they sort of draw a line on it. They, 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 you know, they, there's a wealth of knowledge there that they part that they can pass on in terms, and luckily we still have Mark in in that team. A wealth of knowledge that can be passed on that effectively once the complaints come in it's sort of uh, or, or the issues come in it's sort of transferred across if it's if it if it's maintenance is transferred across to their side because what i'm trying to do is get the, the you know stefan outlined some of the significant backlogs we've got on legal issues it's just trying to you know allow one team to focus on that and then the parks team to focus on the actual maintenance of our of our statutory network you know they're, 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 they're the gray areas in between such as you know unadopted and uh, if i use the term permissive paths and various other things you know there's this there will still be gray areas in between but in terms of the statutory network then you know they, they crack on and get it they're told what's come in um, we can advise them on what is probably priority should should they want that but it's their budget and you know their their team that goes out and and physically does the work but yeah i'm certainly happy to ask jonathan to come in and uh, jonathan to come in and, and, and present from his side that would be good well, well, could, the sorry. other day riding along the uh, driving along the blackwood bypass there were a team of groundsmen presumably from the parks department it had to be at least seven of them all merrily trimming about a six inch patch of grass alongside the by the the bypass and yet we have rights of way um in this area and of which i'm more familiar which are impassable at the moment and to me it seemed insane that they were trimming a piece of grass that could have been left to, to grow and yet they could have been better deployed under a statutory responsibility the council have in clearing and maintaining the public rights of way yep um could, could we ask for some statistics on, you know, how many rights of way they have cleared since they took over responsibility? I'll second that, uh, definitely. You, you, the answer is we can we, we we can ask and see what they come up with. What what what? I guess they must have records of their job through through their job through their job sheets on that. Um, what 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 um, I'll ask then is to come up with some broad statistics. I don't think they've got the capacity to analyse into into massive detail what's going on, but they'll certainly ask, you know, if they've got the records on the sort of paths they've worked on and the lengths that they've done and the types of work that they and the types of work that they've undertaken. Because also, what I found strange was under an FOI. I, I don't know if you're aware. I asked for how much was in the maintenance uh, public rights of way budget for the last financial year. And what came back was that there was £36,400 still remaining in the budget that had failed to be spent. Well, I found that very frustrating because why was that? That's a question I would like to, obviously I'm not directing it to you, Phil, because I don't believe you're now in a position to answer it. But I think it's a question that needs answering. If the rights of way are in such a poor condition elsewhere as they are in the Manmole area, then why was there nearly £40,000 left in the maintenance budget? But again, you quite. I, I I can't answer that, but I will. I will. I will tip off that question is coming to him. Thank you. Did I see that uh, that Michael Poynton had a raised earlier? I don't know if this his question or query has been addressed. I, I think Michael was just saying he had to go because he had an appointment. Oh, uh, oh yeah. right. Okay. Um, at this juncture, can I just sort of uh, make a comment? Um, I don't know how familiar people are with the, the footpaths down in the, the Machen area, but there's a, a forest road runs from uh, from Machen up to the, the Main Fluid, uh, runs from Rue de Guerin Lane. And it's run through an area over the past month, over the past year, it's run through an area where there has been uh, t t tree felling. Um, uh, and the lower part is one of the uh, the tasks that they or the things that they did was put a uh, create a some sort of barrier across the road to enable their the contractors' vehicles to move across one side of the the track to the other without causing too much damage. Anyway, at the end of June, I, I was walking through the forest there, and obviously there was no signs of any activity. Yet. We still had this huge barrier, which obviously you, 
uh, you couldn't get over with a push chair or 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 or, uh, or, or wheelchair anyway. So anyway, I, I made contact with uh, uh, one of my contacts within NRW and pointed out the the, the problem. Um, I, I wasn't checking up, but uh, um, my walk took me past it a fortnight later. And much to my surprise, the whole barrier and, and the obstacle had been removed. So just a, a feather in the cap or a, a good word there for, for NRW or its uh, contractors uh, to uh, attending to, to the needs of, of walkers in the who use that uh, particular section of the footpath. So uh, thanks to NRW, and the the track is right back to its original condition. I was expecting just a little uh, a, a JCB to come along just to create a a trackway through it, but no, they came along with a huge machine and and swept the whole lot away. Thanks. Uh, all right. Anybody else got anything to comment to wish to add there? The, the, there's only one item I or one thing I'd like to mention here if if if, if, if everybody else is done on the AOB. And that was uh, something I intercepted from, uh, from 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 Ruth's gang from the British Horse Society. They've been pushing um, Welsh government to have some guidance, a definitive answer on how um, amendments to the Crow Act, in in terms of the ability to claim rights of way, was likely to affect Wales. Um, as has been outlined previously, there was a 2026 date put on for all outstanding claims to be submitted to the councils. A cut-off date is what they call it. Thereafter, uh, no new rights of way could be claimed on, on a historic basis. Um, Welsh government have uh, the, uh, have now come come out and said basically that part of the legislation is not going to be applying to Wales. Um, they didn't want it to apply to Wales because they felt that it might be actually detrimental to encouraging people into the countryside. So just for clarity, for, for anyone who may have been beavering away on these things in the background, there's no need to because 2026 is not a cutoff date for Wales. They're not a, they're not adopting it. It's, it's, it's business as usual on this. Oh, that's good news. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. We seem to have moved ahead much quickly than I anticipated. Um, has anybody got any, and obviously utilising the remaining time, anybody got any anything they want to refer back in the previous uh, uh, agenda, or do we, have we come to a close? Is there any flags up? No, it looks as if we've come to a close. Do you want to, anything you want to add there, Phil, or is it? Uh, no, I, I, I'm done, thanks, Chair. We're all done? Right. Perhaps so, perhaps and tell Barry that if he if he was at the last meeting he missed another birthday, but I'm not quite sure if we've got a birthday today which would have made it three in a row. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, at this uh, point, then I'd like to thank everyone for attending to today's local access forum meeting, and uh, I now declare the meeting closed, and you may now hang up. Lovely. Yeah.